Hello, hello, good afternoon. Uh, let's welcome John Betchy to the stage. He's gonna talk to us about all of the millions and millions of devices that he has hacked over time. He's come to us from the IoT Village. So give it up and thank you very much. I'm gonna talk out of this, hopefully that works. Kind of allergic to podiums, so I'm just gonna talk like this. So welcome everybody, I'm John Vecchi. Um, I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at Phosphorus Cybersecurity. Um, been in this business 25 plus years. <clears throat> been on the front of a lot of different categories in this, in this industry. Uh, but this is one that I've always known is very big. Um, and so what I'm gonna present today, I'm gonna talk about, this isn't a product pitch. I'm gonna talk about the state of this industry, the types of devices that are out there, we're going to walk through some of the issues with these devices. I'm going to talk about some of the prominent attacks and attack vectors that are hitting these devices today. And right around the 10 minute mark, I'm going to hurry up over to an actual camera hack because I want to show you guys an actual hack on a camera. I don't have much time, but I'm going to kind of squeeze that in. Um, so in any event, let's kind of get started. I call it XIOT, stands for Extended Internet of Things. And what does that mean? There are multiple kind of pillars of XIoT devices because there's so many, and they range from what we call kind of enterprise IoT devices. Think of these kind of in what I call the carpeted areas of enterprises, right? Cameras, printers, VoIP phones, layer, layer two kind of switches, load balancers, HVAC controllers, smart card and CACs, and all those kind of things you'd see in a, in a kind of enterprise environment. Then you have OT, operational technology. These are things like ICS devices, PLCs, critical infrastructure, SCADA devices, all those kinds of things, right? Then you have IOMT devices, Internet of Medical Devices. These are things like infusion pumps, wearable medical devices, all the things you'd find. These are oftentimes life-critical devices. And then you have what's called IIoT, Industrial Internet of Things. These would be in kind of discrete and batch manufacturing, all those kinds of things. So there's tons of these devices. You can see some of them here, but there's Similar things across any of these devices that are very common, right? They're all purpose-built, right? They're all basically just Linux servers running a flavor of Linux. It might be Android, BSD, BusyBox, VxWorks, a host of different kind of operating systems, but they're all basically Linux-based. You, you can't put endpoint agents on this, right? So you can't put Tanium or CrowdStrike on these things. Uh, they're not traditional IT assets. They're very different, right? Uh, and they're all network connected. They speak TCP IP. They love to connect, right? Uh, and so that's kind of the state of these things, right? Um, and there are many, many of these. So there's a different ways to kind of look at how big this is. But since I've been in this industry, I'm just showing you kind of, let's compare kind of cloud security with endpoint security with this security, right? So endpoint security, right? There's about as many endpoint devices on the planet as there are people, right? There's probably five to six billion on any given day, right? And just so you know, the number of those devices every year is decreasing. It's not increasing, it's decreasing, okay? Um, cloud security, there's about 10 million physical servers that make up the cloud security market. That's not that many servers, not counting virtual ones, but physical ones, right? So you can see that when you get to XIoT, upwards of 60, 70 billion of these things already. And by the way, that's increasing about 18 to 20% every year. So these devices are exploding in size, right? They're everywhere, they're smart devices, right? So let's talk about the state of these because that's really why, what I want to talk about today. We know how many of these devices there are, but in simple terms, they're a mess. Okay, these things are absolutely insecure, and by any other kind of view of cybersecurity, the state of these devices from a security perspective is an epic fail, okay? And every day I'm in this business, it's kind of like I'm back in 1992. And if you literally think of where we were in about 1992 with IT security, that's where we are today with this, right? The most basic table stake security is not even present in a lot of these devices, but they're being targeted in a big way. So let's talk about why they're being targeted. But first, you guys know Shodan, you, under, you see Shodan, yeah. So Shodan's awesome, you can just go up and do a search. So 
I did a kind of basic search on Shodan. I went and looked for cameras and VoIP phones and printers and UPS, right, uninterruptible power supplies. And I just said, how many of these devices at this time and this day when I did this search are available to me that were network connected on the open internet? So cameras, close to five million of them, right? VoIP phones, 250 plus thousand of those, right? Printers, at that time, about 83,000 network connected devices. All of those like ridiculously insecure, and I'll talk about why. And then you have something like UPSs, right? And then just kind of look at that and say, why on earth there would be 14,000 UPSs connected to the open internet is beyond me, but the reality is 100% of those devices, we've been interrogating these things for six years, interrogated millions of them, 100% of them are deployed with default credentials. And if I mention default credentials today, it's not anything secret. You can go to Google and do the search on it. Every single one of them has a default credentials. Anyone want to guess? APC, APC, isn't that amazing? 100% of them, right? Um, again, across all of these, pretty much all deployed, mostly with default credentials. And so let's talk about the target of these devices. So if you're familiar with Fronton, maybe you've heard of it, right? <clears throat> So Fronton is a serious piece of enterprise software. I mean, at Phosphorus, we built a platform to secure these devices, and it's a serious piece of enterprise software. This is a serious piece of enterprise software designed by the Russian FSB to pretty much hack any XIOT device on the planet, right? In addition to that, it has incredibly sophisticated social networking per, uh, capabilities on it. So it can launch hundreds of social media accounts, right? and spawn them and upload disinformation, right? So this thing is a serious piece of enterprise software. But what happened is the Digital Revolution, which is a hacking group, hacked the Russian FSB and just released this on BitTorrent, right? So now it's on all your favorite torrents. It's a military nation state piece of, of software hacking, and it's basically out there available to anybody today, right? And so this thing is sophisticated. But it brings up a point. Why would Russia, the Russian FSB, spend all this time to build a piece of firmware like this, software like this for hacking? Because they know no one's looking at this stuff, right? They're a mess. They're deployed with default credentials. They, they ship with critical CVEs of 8, 9, and 10, right? Uh, the firmware's six, seven years old. Ports and protocols open all over the place. No one's looking at it. Why, what could go wrong, right? So why would they not focus on this stuff, right? So that's, that, you're gonna see this more and more. Then you have things like banned IoT devices. So back in about you know, 2018, HR 5515, basically from the US you know, federal government said you cannot deploy certain technology made by China on, on US federal networks, right? Well, last, last year, at the end of last year, the FCC actually banned this stuff everywhere, so you can't import or deploy it because of a national security threat. Why would they do that? Well, because this stuff comes into the country pretty much ready to hack, and I talk about this WISE, the W-Y-Z-E camera, for, from about 2018 to about 2021 or so. If you went to Amazon and said, show me the best security camera on Amazon, Amazon's favorite, it was the WISE camera, right? Uh, and that thing was pretty special because it just, it just bypassed all kind of middlemen that just shipped the minute you plugged it in. It deployed Nmap on your network, did a complete scan, started just capturing terabytes of video and audio. Remember, these things don't just capture video. These cameras that are all over the place, they capture audio. You might not know that, but they capture audio and just ships it back. So if you went into this device, for example, and shut off audio or video, the red light would come up, shut off, doesn't matter, it's still capturing audio and video, right? So that's kind of this, this state of some of these devices, and, and they're all over the place, right? So some of the other attacks. Bots are prevalent. I'm, you know, I don't get terribly excited about bots. I mean, it's not like a slammer or a Melissa virus or something. But it really shows kind of the intent and what's happening with these devices. So Mirai is kind of like, I call it kind of the grandfather of XIoT attacks. It's a massive botnet. It basically uses a cable modem, a couple routers, some access cameras. And there you go. You can go exploit these things on Telnet port 23. They're all wide open, default credentials. 
uh, and you can, you can see the damage that was done on that thing, right? Then you have things like quiet exit. So we all understand you can exploit kind of a 10-year-old CVE on an XIOT, right, with a, with a critical vulnerability, but this was designed for XFIL. So this targeted, you know, printers, cameras, even network gear, right, for XFIL. And I'm gonna show that to you and show you kind of how they did that. Uh, but this thing, you know, example of this thing, 18 month dwell time, that's actually pretty short. This thing is all over the place. So it's sitting on your critical devices. They take command and control. They get in just with the default credential. They get in, take command and control, and now they can go exfil anything on prem up into the cloud. That's what they did here. Uh, and that thing's pretty serious as well. PLCs, I'm going to talk a little bit. So these things are, are also very vulnerable. Right? You don't know where they are, you can't touch them, very old software, these things are very old, all kinds of problem with PLCs as well. Pipe Dream, this is ripped from the headlines, the Vulkan files. This is a piece of Russian software that's specifically targeting PLCs, oil and gas, critical infrastructure, railways, airports, it's pretty, pretty nasty, right? Hospitals and fusion pumps, I mean the list goes on and on, right? three to five of these devices, you know, 50% of them deployed with default credentials. The other half are basically changed once when provisioned and never thought about again. And the, 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 the password on those things when they were provisioned is terribly weak, right? So I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna kind of speed up because I wanna, I wanna actually use the time to talk about the worst, biggest offender of any device is the camera. It's a mess, think about these things. They love to be connected. Uh, they have open ports and protocols. Every password's default. They're all shipped out of the box with critical vulnerabilities. These things are an absolute mess. So what I'm gonna do now, if I have some time, I'm actually just gonna show how we can hack one of these cameras. So bear with me because I'm gonna do this on my keyboard and I might screw this up. If I click, it's gonna go back, but I'm gonna try to do this, right? So we're gonna try to go through this hack and kind of show you a hack, okay? So this is Kali Linux, right? And this is the laptop we're gonna use to hack an actual live security camera. Uh, this is live security camera. We're gonna log into this device. This isn't the hack yet, we're just logging into it. But just remember, right, that the hack kind of starts here because I can just go to Google and ask, this is a Hikvision camera. What's the default credential? Admin one, two, three, four, or admin one, two, three, four, five. Wow, that's a, so, you know, I can just, Google the default credential, I can log into this. And we're just gonna log in. We're gonna take a look at what's happening in this camera. Once you get into the camera, you can see a couple things, right? First of all, you can see what is the camera watching. This is a live camera on the network. So we're gonna show and watch. So there it is, it's, it's, it's watching a very secure layer two switch on a table, very secure. Uh, so that's what the camera's uh, watching. So we're gonna be able to see that. And then we're gonna be able to go in and just take a look at the, the, the kind of settings, the configurations, the gateways, the IP address, the passwords, and all those kinds of things. You see that all in here, right? At the end of the day, this is a Linux server that just happens to be performing camera functions, right? So when you see a camera, I see a Linux server, and so do the hackers, right? So there it is. So what we're gonna do on here, if I can just go back, so we're gonna kind of, I, I, I showed you Shodan, right? So let's do the first thing a hacker might do is say, all right, I wanna go up to Shodan, I'm gonna just search Shodan and see how many of these network accessible Hikvision cameras are there on the open internet that I can see. And if, if we do the global search, you're gonna see there's about three and a half million of them in the world, right? And you say, okay, well let's, what about the US, right? So let's just do the US. So we do that, there's about a half a million of these things available, right? So, so again, remember, most of these attacks aren't happening from the open internet. They're gonna attack IT and then pivot over to your XIOT, but still, half a million of these things available, right? So that's, that's pretty good, I see that. Then I say, okay, what about, let's go get an exploit, right? So I'm gonna try to go up, I'm gonna go up to exploit. Here's da exploit database DB, right? So again, there's a lot of kind of, um, paid places you can get exploits. You can go on the dark web and pay thousands of dollars for these things. There are public sources of exploits. I'm really cheap, so I'm going here, this is free, right? So I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna see 
So here we go, here's the exploit. You can see it for this Hikvision camera. I'm gonna pick that exploit, okay? So there's the exploit, then I go in here. There you go, there's the exploit, right? And here's the code right there, right? So I can modify this, copy it, whatever I want, right? So now, what I'm gonna do though is I'm going to, uh, I'm going to download this exploit, right? Which is just a script, and I'm gonna download and put it on my Laptop, right? Okay, so then when I do that, I'm gonna create a directory, you're gonna see me, I'm gonna create this directory here, which is called op Operation Hick Vision or Opt Hick Vision. I'm gonna create that directly, I'm gonna put that exploit right on it, right? So there it is, I'm right there, there it is, I got it, right? So I put that on there, right? So now, I'm gonna make this thing executable, I'm gonna make that, so there it is, there it is. So now what I'm gonna do is I've got that on the camera. So now what I wanna do is I'm gonna do a check. And I'm gonna check this remote device, which happens to be this camera on port 80, and I'm gonna ask, is it vulnerable to this exploit, right? So I'm gonna do a check, and you're gonna see there it's gonna come, right? And so it's verified. I'm gonna go back just a little bit and show you this. See that right there? It's verified exploitable, right? So I just did a check and it said verified exploitable. Perfect. Now I know this particular exploit on this device is exploitable. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change from check to shell, which is actually going to execute the code on this device, and here's where the exploit begins to happen. I change it to shell, bingo, there it is, right? So I've got it, you can see here, BusyBox version 12.126.2, 2019 is the last time that thing is updated. Pretty typical, right? So there it is, I just exploited this camera, it means I have root privilege on this device way beyond the administrative control. For all intent and purposes, we own this camera right now, okay? Totally own this camera, right? So now, what I'm gonna do, I just verified that's exploitable, okay? So now I'm gonna list the directories in here. I'm in this camera, I now have full control. If you know Linux, this is very Linux-like. Just gonna list the directories. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another directory on here called bad, and you're gonna see me create this directory, and I'm gonna highlight it here just to make sure it's there, just wanna make sure that directory is there. It's called bad, you're gonna see me highlight it, okay? So there it is, there it is, bad's the directory. Okay, so I just exploited this camera with the exploit I got. I'm now listing and creating directories. That in itself isn't earth shattering, but we'll get there, right? So here I am, now, Let's kind of do some interesting things here, right? So I'm gonna clear this out, just to make space so you can see a little bit better. I'm gonna re-execute the shell, okay? So there it is, okay. So now, here I am. Now let's, let's do something. Let's, let's bring up some hacker tools and get them onto this directory, right? So I wanna, I wanna get some tools. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use TFTP just to show some other protocols. I'm, from TFTP, I'm gonna do a remote get from this camera, I'm gonna to go to my laptop and grab a file, file called do.bad, and I'm gonna grab that file from my laptop, and I'm, and I'm gonna put it here on the camera, okay? So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna put it on the camera, there it is. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this executable, I'm gonna use read write 777, so that I make that read executable, there it is, there's 777, it's now executable, and there I go, I've got now this file on here. Now, I could have uploaded anything I wanted. I could have put hacker tools, password crackers, you name it, anything I wanted, right? I could have done anything I wanted, right? Um, but in this case, I just brought this video in and, and uh, here's the do.bad, so I'm gonna let this come in. I made it executable. Uh, and in this case, I just uploaded a Shrek video. I just wanted to show you I could do anything I want, okay? Um, so now, Let's do something interesting. Okay, so presumably I have some hacker tools on here. Anything I wanted, I could have just piled them on there, okay? So now, let's exfil, right? Remember, this is the point of these things. I take command and control, I can exfil. So now I can go to your IT assets, I can go to your exchange server, I can go to your cloud, and I can start exfilling data, right? But what I wanna do here for the sake of time is let's just look for some interesting stuff that's sensitive on this camera. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look in the directory and I'm gonna see a pair, right? I'm gonna see a pair of .pem files, public keys, private and public keys, okay? So I'm gonna find them on this camera. 
You'll see them here. I'm going to highlight them, right? So there they are, serve cert.pem, serve key.pem, a pair of public and private keys. Oftentimes, these can be um, into a single file, but in this case, they're bifurcated into two. OK, so real quickly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use SCP, OK, secure copy protocol, which uses SSH port 22. I'm going to exfiltrate these PAM files, of which there are two. I'm going to exfiltrate them, and I'm going to put them in the same directory on my laptop that I had the video that I uploaded, OK? So here you go, so you see SCP. There you go, I'm going to see the files. I'm going to tell them, please exfil, go over to my directory on my laptop, and we're going to place those files in the laptop. Make sure you're going to see them. There they are. There's the two files. Serve cert, serve key. Here it comes. And now, bingo, these files are going to be placed right over in the same directory, right there where I got the video. Here's the do.bad video, there's the two files. I could have exfiltrated anything I wanted. It could have been passwords, proprietary information, emails, your exchange server, your cloud. I don't care. I could have done anything I wanted. I just showed you that, right? So that's kind of uh, where we are on this, right? I don't have time to go through the fixes of this. Come on over to our booth. Well, we can actually fix this by talking to these devices, finally, doing a profile in them, discovering them, and then let's take care of default passwords and credentials, right? It's a big problem. If you're worried about a critical CVE and your pa passwords are default, you're misplaced. Go back and fix the passwords. So we can rotate passwords, we can shut off Telnet, SSH, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, all these extraneous ports and protocols. We can upgrade and downgrade firmware, and we can maintain state on these devices so that we know if they went from a secure state back down to an insecure state, someone can just go put a paper clip into these devices. I want to be able to know that there was environmental drift. We can do all that today for the very first time ever, right? We can actually start fixing this stuff because believe me, all the nation states are focused on it as well as the botnet armies and all the cyber criminals. Just think about what I just showed you. I could have done a host of things and I could have had ransomware easily deployed on that device, right? So I don't have time for much else, I'm way over. But I'll stop there and see if anyone has any questions. And sorry for going over a couple of minutes, but I wanted to show you the hack. Any, any questions or anything there? Cool. Awesome. Well, we're over in the IT Village. It's Phosphorus Cybersecurity. Thanks for joining me today, and have a great rest Thank of the day. Thank you, John. Cheers.